It is the Hangzhou Olympic Sports Centre Gymnasium. And this is the view inside. What a magnificent building it is too. So after that women's singles, we turn our attention to men's singles. And a repeat of the All England semi-final earlier this year. An event that Li Shifeng went on to win. That was his first major title and since then, He's won Asian Games gold as well. Up against Anders Antonsen, who is a three-time World Championship medalist. Uh, this match is from Group B. And I can tell you that in Group A, the number one seed, Kodai Naraoka, has just lost to the former finalist, Anthony Sinisuka Ginting. Ginting, twice a finalist at the end of year championships. So two courts only for the entirety of uh, the first four days of this tournament. And then of course one court for finals day. Li Shifeng of China against Anas Antonsen of Denmark. won the All England title, one of the four Super 1000 events on the HSBC BWF World Tour when making his debut at the event earlier this year. And from there, quite frankly, he's gone from strength to strength. And the Dane, Anna's Antonsen, making his third appearance at the end of year championships. Actually won the event in Bangkok, the 2020 World Tour Finals that were played in January 2021. As the world was trying to come out of the global lockdown and pandemic. So this will be a third meeting between these two players and Li Xifeng has won both previous. Last time they met was that thrilling All England semi-final 21-18 in the deciding game in Birmingham. So I believe Li Xifeng either chose to serve or to receive because he was asked what he wanted to do and then Anna Zantonson was able to choose ends. Three-time World Championship medalist, and as far as his World Tour campaign was concerned this year, two finals from 18 World Tour title tournaments, one in the Korean Open. As we look at our Anbar Kifgub from New Zealand, Sudeep Bave of India is the service judge. 
Ready to play. So as far as the world tour, stats are concerned between these two players uh, this year. No question, Li Shi Feng has the uh, better stats. Five finals from 18 tournaments played, winning two World Tour titles. The New England Championships and the US Open, which was one of the 300 events. Sung Jun, his coach, former world champion. And Joachim Pearson, the coach for Antonsen, his personal coach. Became an independent player, Antonsen. Moved to Dubai just a fraction over a year ago. But interestingly, he's been training prior to this event with the Malaysian national team. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Anna's Antonsen, Denmark. And on my left, Li Shi Fong, China. And as Antonsen to serve, love all, play. So Anna Antonsen of Denmark, the former champion of the World Tour Finals, looking for his first ever victory over Li Shi Fong. That's a lovely shot. So, Steen, I was saying that he's been training with the Malaysian uh, national team. Do you know if he went back to Dubai after the uh, China Masters or yeah. whether he went back to Denmark? Or? He did not. He stayed in Shenzhen and um, watched because he was um, sort of um, in two minds whether he was going here or he was going on holiday. And when he knew that he was qualified, then he went to uh, Kuala Lumpur to practice with the Malaysian team. And of course, Kenton Shimoto needed to win the event, if I recall correctly, did, to actually did. qualify. Failed to do so. It was ironic that Antonsen lost in that tournament to uh, Kota Naroka in a long, long match, and then in the end ended up sitting at home cheering for Naroka to win the final so that he could qualify for the World Tour Finals here. And he's not going to Dubai or Denmark either after this tournament here. I just uh, chatted to him and his coach, uh, Joachim Pearson, today. They're going to Melbourne for three weeks and practicing there until the new World Tour season starts in 2024. Well, that's a, a fascinating Three, decision. One. Who's he going to spar with in Australia? Um, the local players and Joachim Pearson, his coach. Now, so I guess maybe they'll take a little time off after this tournament here. And, and the thing is, which was a little bit surprising to some of the Danes, because Victor Axelsen has moved residents to Dubai, but um, it turns out that Antonsen hasn't actually, so so um, he's more like a, a free bird, so to speak. He can practice a lot of different places, but... Um, still resident in Denmark. That's a nice net shot. Oh, and again. Oh. 
Well, I know we've talked on many occasions, Steen, about Two, the qualities three. of Antonsen. His uh, tactical awareness, yeah. I think, is absolutely superb. You see that as his best asset? Yes. Yeah, yeah. me too. Uh, able to tailor his game to uh, his opponent, exploit their weaknesses. Uh, He's been, he's been um, through a lot of injuries and, and he's been open about that it's affected him, that he's doubted himself at times whether he could come back. And I think now he has the feeling that he really can come back and, and can win the biggest of tournaments. Um, seems to have gotten in better shape. I thought that. Yeah. I thought that. But it's a long process when you've been injured because first you have to sort of recover from the injury and then you have to build up slowly, very slowly. And that, that um, asks a lot of your patience because you, you want to make the most of it as, as quickly as possible. But it, it's, it's a learning process. And sometimes you pay a, a big price of learning. Well, it's certainly he's had a better year, Hantonson, than he did last year. He withdrew from more tournaments last year than he actually played. Yeah. He withdrew from uh, from ten and only played six, whereas yeah. this year he's withdrawn from four tournaments but still has played in 20 individual tournaments. And I think what he's learned is that if, if there's the slightest sign that any old injury is resurfacing, then it's quits. Yeah. Stop, go back, recover, so that perhaps it's one tournament and two weeks of practice instead of um, four tournaments and uh, three months of practice that's gone. Yes, I remember in the Japan Open earlier this year, he was 18 all in the opening game against Naraoka. Yeah and retired because he was fearful that his groin injury had uh, was perhaps about to go again. Good shot. Yeah, straight down the line, that's lovely. Six, three. So we've talked about Hantonson's qualities, his tactical awareness. What about Li Shifang? Yeah, he's, uh, he's not much after in terms of um, tactical um, skills, in my opinion. I think Sun Jun has uh, made wonders with him. Uh, it's not on all... Um, areas of the court that, that he's um, uh, fantastic or uh, all sort of playing conditions but but he's willing to it seems like he's willing to do what it takes I've, I've seen him really uh, try to play super attacking uh, when that was needed and I've also seen him play uh, very patient uh, good shot quality nice defense and to me, is one of the, the pleasant surprises of the year. Started the year as, as number 20, and now um, what ranked number three, winning all England and winning Asian Games. That that, um, that could also have been um, the most improved player of the year. Yeah. Um, the award that was won by uh, Jiang Xinbang and uh, Wei Yashin, but Li uh, Xifang really. Uh, has done amazing as well. Super good shot quality when uh, when he's in good shape. He's, he's played a lot of tournaments because he had to improve his ranking. So he's also played a lot of tournaments, perhaps a little bit too many, and and uh, has had some tournaments where where it's been uh, early exits. Good oh, that's a beauty. Oh. That's gone wrong. Well, the, the other thing that I noticed so far, Steve, is that, you know, I don't tend to think of Antonsen as a, 
all-out attacking player. No. But he's the one that so far in this match has dictated the pace. Yeah, he's, he's commanded he's the rallies. He's controlling the rallies. Yeah. And that, that's, that's what's been interesting to see, first of all, what kind of, uh, what kind of shape uh, the Shifeng is in, uh, but also whether Axel, uh, um, Antonsen could indeed um, score points. I think um, that's going to be uh, super important, whether he can continue to score in his attack against uh, Li Shifeng. Outside of the picture here, where I feel that uh, Li Xifeng more or less deliberately uh, left the initiative a lot to Antonsen. And what would the theory of that be? Uh, score on me if you can. T daring him to score. He's done it previously, leading 8 4, has set some good smashes and so on, but, but if you then start playing deliberately a little bit more uh, patient. Then um, you can focus a little bit more on your own defense and so on. And, and um, you can also say, okay, Thank you. you might, your attack might be able to penetrate now, but it's gonna Three. take um, long rallies. It's gonna take a lot of hard work. So do you think your attack can penetrate in the second game as well? Sometimes that's what we've seen Naroka do against um, his opponents. Now well, that's Oi, a very that's a careless, one. careless error. Thank you. Service over. Nine, four. You see, if you'd asked Five, me, Steen, about this she funk, I particularly remember the All England final where I saw a lot of attacking play. And I would say that he was he was naturally an attacking player. I wouldn't have necessarily identified what you've identified, which is his good tactical play. Um, and I haven't really seen, apart from that last rally, that was the first real rally that we've seen Li Shifeng attack. The, the last one here? Yeah. Yeah. But but uh, I don't think Antonsen is uh, interested in uh, Li Shifeng attacking. No, he's not giving him the opportunity, is he? Which is why Anna Zantonson has such a handsome lead here in the mid-game interval of the opening game. A six-point advantage.
So I struggled to hear anything that Joachim Pearson was saying to Anders Andersen. Did you catch anything? Couldn't hear anything. No, me neither. Oh, that's a little wild. Service over. Six, eleven. Nice, that's clever. some stage if a player gets too far behind by just playing a passive style of play they've got to change it up yeah i think so on this unless it's really like part of uh, a plan that my former colleague Morton frost could have played in, in his days saying okay yeah the first one and a half game is not really important it's important who plays well who plays the better from the middle of the second game and i need to sort of um take the worst of speed away from my opponent by playing long rallies. Um, I'm not sure that Seven, it's the same the case here. It, it might be that um, that he's not um, totally at his best. Uh, Li Shifong has got a large strapping on his, um, his right knee. Um, I, I see him as a player who has done really well in this uh, year in terms of peaking at All England and Asian Games. I think Asian Games has been a clear goal for the Chinese players uh, played in this city here. Good mm, play that's again. Fine now, eh? yeah. so that's, over. that's also part 40, of Antonsen's uh, strength, the courage to go for the, uh, the chances and, and the, uh, the courage to look completely stupid when you're wrong. against what, what kind of players is it that he's struggling against and I uh, came to the conclusion that it's um, either players that are quick on their feet light light footed um, players with great net game or tactically strong players Pranoy, Lakshasen, Lokin Yu, um, Ginting Discussions going on between uh, Li Shifang and uh, Sun Jun. Well, when you consider that last year Li Shifang was having to qualify for 500 events, didn't actually get into any. Oh, oh my goodness gracious! Didn't actually get into any 1,000 events last year. No. You know, so to win the All England Championship. It was absolutely outstanding. That was only his second ever Super 1000 tournament that he played. Yeah. 
did well to put that away. He had broken strings. And that's when, when he's um, given too much time in his attack. He's very, very strong, in my opinion, uh, Li Shifeng. Good at converting. Oh, yes, challenge that. They should bring challenges called in. Oh, I thought that was wide by a whisker. with the drift it might well have come in but my instinct reaction was that it was wide we wait for the instant review to tell us for sure here we go indeed it was wide that's a great challenge from the day. But I noticed that he played back at Anton's net and net on the forehand side, uh, Li Shifeng. And you don't think he should have done it? Or? Yes, I think he should do that because okay. from, from what I've read of the head to heads, then um, the net game is, is important. And um, I recall, I don't recall against who, but I recall one match where he was playing um, in drifty conditions. He was finishing on the bad side and there was nothing to do than to to play um, attack spin attack spin and it, it's not necessarily what he loves to do but he ended up trying to do it it was a little bit too late I think he lost that match but uh, again the ability to 17, try and learn and, and put different aspects different tool uh, different tools in uh, in your game that, that's super important well, there's nothing wrong with that shot there from Antonson. That was an absolute beauty. Oh, now there's the sort of attacking play that I remember with absolute clarity. Yeah. from the All England Championships in Birmingham earlier this year. 12-17. It's a fantastic shot. Yeah, wonderful. there early wasn't he so then he had the up. options yeah. 18 
quite wide, and that's perhaps an indication of the sideways drift from left to right as we all look down during the rallies. This is a tricky situation for Anton. He's really got to be careful now because he's close to taking this first game, but he um, needs to stay focused. Both previous encounters, both previous matches have gone the full distance. Yeah, that was clearly wide. So far, they haven't played less than 80 minutes in their <laughs> encounters. I recall especially the match at All England. That was a brilliant match. Yeah. Yeah. And I said after that match that he felt that um, he'd never played against a better player. Really? That you find of that match. Wow, that is a big call, isn't it? Yeah. When you consider that Alessandrinson lost a very one-sided World Championship final against a certain Kenta Momota back in 2019. Uh, he doesn't know how good Momota was back then because he didn't really challenge him. <laughs> I suppose that's one way of looking at it, but he I think that's a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a spent force in that final, but uh, yeah, I agree. And yeah. he's also Lin Dan and, and Chung Wei. Exactly. Um, but he, he certainly played well. Two points in it now. Clench fist for Amanda Zantonson towards his coach. 1960. Look at the reaction. Thirty-five shots. Thank you. That's long of the back line. And Anna Zantonson has earned himself 16. four game point opportunities. And again, clever play by Antonsen in the flat game.
Oh, that's oh, a lovely beautiful. shot. From Lee Schieffer. Oh, my goodness me, that hold and push down the forehand side was played to perfection. Take a look at this. Takes it early, holds it. Creates the disguise. Two game points have come and gone. But another two remain for Anna Zantensen. So does he dare to flick one more time? Li Shifeng, that's the site where he flicked out. Opening game on his third game point opportunity. 21-18 confirms the umpire. What an excellent opening game. So it seemed to me as if Li Shifeng took a little while to really get going. He was a little bit too passive in the early stages. This is a wonderful kill from Antonsen to close out the game. 21-18 in 30 minutes. For mig ser det ikke som om, at du kommer til at spille for meget for stereotyp til forbud. Selvom det ikke er decideret stereotyp, men du skal lige have ham tilbage, så bliver det der til forbud mere effektivt. Jeg tror, han kommer, jeg tror, jeg tror, han kommer meget offensivt. Det er også det. Så jeg tror, han får vælge. Når jeg vælger at spille meget vand, så skal jeg virkelig ikke gøre det på en passiv måde nu. Vi er ved med at træde ind i bolden her. Så har vi lidt mod med nu. Ja, præcis. Det er vildt, så han ikke kan få i det. Well, the umpire's going to call the players over because they haven't got ready. So, Anna Zantensen, one game to the good. 21-18, that opening game. And I'm hoping, Steen, that you were able to hear some of the coaching yes, I was. that time. Was. What did Joachim Pearson have to say? Yeah, they felt that uh, Li Shifang was going to come out um, much more, um, One, love. much more attacking here in um, in the second game, and um, uh, I couldn't hear all of it, but um, they were a little bit uh, afraid that the um, shots into the net from Antonsen could be too. Um, stereotype so variation was important and he was also a little bit uh, uncertain about um, a couple of things whether he should um, keep on playing a li little bit longer rallies or uh, keep pushing him to the back um, they also discussed about the drift but i, I really couldn't uh, tell whether he felt that he was playing up against the drift now antonson or that it was she think that they uh, referred to Two, love. Play. Oh, that's a great shot from Hansen. My goodness, that was a double shot. Oh, 
almost seemed to play this with topspin. He did sort of, didn't he? Yeah, and, and <laughs> he basically um, trapped Li Xifeng in the flat game, invited him to push that one and was ready for it. That was brilliantly done. What a Love. good start to this second game by the Dane. in the nose in the flat game, Li Xifeng. He looks a bit disheartened. So how does he stop getting drawn into that? Yeah, he's got to lift. Lift or block, cross. Really quick, quick. Racket only. Thank you. the flat game again. Oh. One of the first rallies where she comes over. well out of the flat game. One, five. difficult to see whether it's uh, straight or cross from uh, Li Xifeng. Still coaching going on. That's permissible in between rallies. I think there's signs that Li Xifeng is up in his game. Yeah, and I also think that it was Li Xifeng who was playing up against the drift that the Danes were talking about. the problem if you play cross court in singles if your opponent reads it all they've got to do is play a straight block and you've got the full diagonal of the court to scamper oh.
forced the short lift from Antonsen. Li Shi Feng was smashing from just about the double service line. Look where his feet are. Look where he lands on that double service line. That's why he was able to play the winner. But that last rally, again, to me, shows a willingness from Li Shi Feng to try and attack him a little yeah. more than he did in yeah. the opening game. He's got to do that. He's got to... Um, to try and get the control of the rallies. I feel that he was on the right track in the, the last part of um, of the first game. He, was, he just fallen too far behind. Well, most peculiar in that rally, Antonsen seemed to lose his, his rhythm or step. Yeah was trying to jump and never left the floor. Thank you. Yes, on court, please. Play. Yeah. Move well in that rally, Antonson, to Eight, get behind the shuttle. Four. A big miss. Nine, four. Looks bewildered. Yeah. Li Shifeng can't find a solution. To the mid game interval. interval. And it is a seven point advantage for Anna's Antonsen, having already won the first. This is a very commanding position for the Dane. Both the players, when the 22nd call is announced, the players should be making their way back onto court. Neither did so.
Yeah, that's another sign to me, Steve, oh. that he's running out of ideas, Li yeah. Shifeng. He's going for the uh, one-hit wonders. This is six straight points to Antonsen. Super. Making seven straight points. 13, four. Defense from his forehand there, Anas Ansonsen. Even though uh, Li Shifeng was playing with a lot of variation, he had good quality. And one of the things to notice is when Ansonsen is at the back court, he plays some long drop shots in behind the uh, white service line, and then he's super quick, super alert on the front court after that. That's where his chances occur. Good shot. Service over. 14, five. Well, this is certainly not the sort of match that I expected, having watched the thrilling semi-final at the All England Championships. This is totally one-sided. Solutions. No. Issue from solid, solid play by um, Antonsen. We mentioned one of the earlier matches this when you've never beaten an opponent before. You've got to have something that you've bettered, and I definitely think Antonsen has bettered his uh, physical condition. I wonder if he. Uh, feels that um, it's a leashy fight at the same stage as all England in this match. I think he's aware enough to realize that it's it's probably not the same kind of shape, but it's still a player that uh, played pretty well in the first game, but during the second game he's been uh, Six, he's been outplayed. Yeah. Game. yeah. Yeah, you can't wait that long before deciding <laughs> to play the shot. <laughs> yeah, and that's a careless error too. But seven, seventeen. He's even after those two errors, he's still got a ten-point advantage. Excellent. Yeah, well taken. Interesting, he, on the couple of kills he's made at the front of the court, he's landed on his left leg as he's lunged forward. Not his racket leg. Antonsen. Antonsen. He's playing fast. Yeah. yeah. 
19, He's playing seven. extremely well. Thank you. So two points away from his first ever victory over Li Shifeng. Oh, yeah. That's a beauty. And what a wonderful way to 20. bring up match, match point, point opportunities. Seven. what you call all or nothing. Eight twenty. Went for the cross court winner Antonson. No attempt to recover. Should the come shuffle come back, and indeed it did come mm. back. And then he just stood and watched. second game and of course equally important for, for Li Shifeng to, to score as many points extra as he can because 21 10 21 12 or something like that that's that's such a big win that it almost counts for an extra game uh, when the score is made up in this uh, round robin um, yeah stage here first of course wins if three or more players are equal then it's uh, games and then eventually points. Oh. That's a lovely shot. 10, 20. Ennis, Ennis is a turning shot. Thank you. Oh my goodness! Oh, that's just incredible. Well, he surely left it way too late to be hunting the shuttle at the front of the court and looking for acute angles. points have come and gone.
this time. And Anna Zantensen records his first ever victory in his third meeting against Li Shi Feng. And he did it, in all honesty, in grand style. 21-18, 21-12, the margin of his victory. Match won by Anna Zantensen, 21-18, 21-12. Umpire just confirming that scoreline. This is the final rally. And Antonson, who was positive right from the start of the match, thoroughly deserved his victory today. Confirmation 21 18, 21 12. A good start to this Group B competition. So coming up next, uh, we have uh, another match involving a Chinese player against a Dane. It is two former champions, Xiu Qi against the defending champion and four-time winner, Victor Axelsson. Welcome back to the ancient city of Hangzhou. Well, there's plenty to see here. There's two old heritage sites. It's a city 